morning everyone. I'm out in this absolutely beautiful area down by this river right now. But let me be completely honest with you. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> I woke up this morning and got out really early to go scouting a different area. And I was on my way there. And then I just felt really strongly that I needed to come here instead. I don't know why, but uh, you know, I'm out here. Just me and some ducks. <laughs> It's been awesome though. It's just a beautiful morning out here. There's a lot of birds singing. Just a really, really pretty morning. So I'll uh, look around this area a little bit, see what we can find, and see what Mother Nature has in store for me this morning. said it before and I'll say it again, what a beautiful morning. I've got a little wood duck hen with her uh, ducklings over here. It's not an incredibly common species in my area, so I'm always, always so excited when I see them. Especially a hen with her ducklings like this. I've never been able to photograph a hen with her ducklings. She's pretty chill around me, which also is kind of uncommon in my area. Usually they're really flighty and skittish. So this is awesome to be able to have her just right here. Guys, I just saw a mink. <laughs> Minks are a species, sorry I'm like giddy right now. Um, <laughs> Minks are a species that I've been wanting to photograph for so many years. And I've seen a handful of them off and on throughout the years. I've just never had an opportunity to sit down, photograph them, get video footage of them. But I just saw a mink and I had him for a little bit too, which is really cool. The funny thing is, I was literally just talking with my wife last night about minks and an opportunity that I had years ago that I didn't take advantage of and that I wished that I would have treated that situation better. So years ago, we were uh, taking our evening walk along a similar stretch of river here. And uh, it was getting pretty dark, but we were walking along and I saw something just kind of splashing in the river. And I looked over and there was a mink that had caught this huge fish and he pulled it out of the river onto a log jam and just started tearing into it. The river at that point was really wide and I couldn't photograph him very well and where it was dark, um, being so far away, I really couldn't get many pictures of him. And I was telling my wife last night how I wished that I could go back in time and you know, me always wearing sandals and whatnot, I would have just waded right into that river very cautiously so as not to bother that mink, but I would have waded into that river to get closer to him and gotten some pictures of him. But the only reason that I didn't that night is there was a fisherman fishing that stretch of river like 30 feet away and I didn't want to scare the fish. But man, if that was today, I would have gone and just talked to him and uh, asked him if it was okay with him if I went into the river a little bit downstream. 
and then I would have waded into that river and photographed that mink just eating that fish because what an opportunity that was. I didn't do that back then and I was just talking with my wife about that and just telling her I wish I could go back in time to relive that. And here I am with the mink this morning. I mean, how incredible. <laughs> so uh, he's just over here. Um, he kind of ducked back down behind some rocks here. So I'm just gonna get back into the vegetation a little bit, see if I can watch him from a distance. And uh, yeah, just see if I can get some footage of this guy. I'm so happy right now though. <laughs> These last few days out here have been absolutely amazing. I've been able to spend about 15 hours looking for this little mink, trying to photograph him. Most of that time, honestly, is spent waiting for him to show up, trying to find him, with a few minutes in there of actually being able to watch him and get some video footage of him. In those few minutes, though, I feel like I've learned so much valuable information. I'm starting to be able to recognize some of his patterns. I'm able to identify some peak activity times. This information is incredibly valuable to me, and I record all of it in my wildlife journal. This is information that I can use in the future to find this mink again or 
or other mink that I'm hoping to photograph. Again, this is incredibly valuable information. I record and use all of it. If you're interested in all, at all in how I keep a wildlife journal, what information I collect and document, check out a video that I uploaded a few months ago where I review all of that information. Like I talked about earlier in this video, we've all had those wildlife encounters that we wish we could go back in time and redo or change something about it in order to get a better picture or a picture. And for me, that mink encounter that I had years ago was always one of those experiences that I wished that I could go back in time and redo. I'm so grateful for the last few days out here. I'm grateful that I had that feeling to come out here when it wasn't my initial plan and I'm so happy that I followed that feeling. It gave me that second chance at getting this mink with the fish. And I'm hoping that with this information that I've been able to collect, I can have a third and a fourth chance even at getting this mink out here. It's been so much fun. Thanks for coming along with me this week, you guys. I hope you've had fun with this little mink, just as I have. It's been so much fun just to be able to watch him, be able to get some video footage, a couple pictures, still working on those though. I hope you've had fun, and if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, share it around, and let me know down in the comments what encounters with wildlife you've had that you wish you could relive, that you're just hoping for a second chance at. Let me know the species and what the encounter was. I would love to hear about it. Thanks for following along this week. Be safe out there, and we'll see you next time.